And we do want to begin in Montreal where that rally is moving through the downtown streets. Jayla Bernstein joining us once again with details. So Jayla, good to see you. What are we seeing at this hour? Michael, we've made it to the end here. We're at Dorchester Square, downtown Montreal, where thousands, tens of thousands of people have gathered. Uh, you can see they're doing speeches behind me, uh, kicking off kind of the end of the protest as things kind of wrap up. Earlier, one of the people speaking was saying, I want to social distance myself from racism. That's kind of the, the kind of positive um, uh, atmosphere we've had here. It's been, I would say, a bit celebratory, though, of course, talking about something very serious and people here are, of course, very upset about uh, the racism and brutality that they've been seeing. Uh, over to my left here, your right, you can see there's a statue where they've unfurled a banner that says Black Lives Matter. People have climbed to the top and unfurled furled that. Despite, you know, a few minor things, uh, we've been speaking with police and they say no major incidents, no arrests, no reports of vandalism today. So really overall, despite the massive gathering of people here in Montreal, it has been peaceful today. Interesting to say that because last weekend was also mainly peaceful. There was towards the end a skirmish with police. So what, uh, pick up on that point, what have the interactions been like with the police this time around, given that the police chief was disinvited to take part in today's event? Right. Well, right out of the gate, this protest was really well organized and they made sure that the messaging right off the bat was that they want this to be peaceful. They want this to be in love. They don't want any violence here. Uh, they did disinvite the police chief, but there was an understanding there. Pro uh, protest organizers said at first they wanted him to attend, but then they decided some protesters felt unsafe having police presence. So they withdrew that. But the police chief said he understood and they're all kind of trying to work together towards a greater understanding. But still, of course, people say there's a lot of work to do here. Well, let's stay in Montreal right now and bring to the program Kiari Gerba. Kiari is an activist, also a financial advisor and podcaster. He joins us in Montreal. Kiari, thank you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for having me. And as we noted, you know, thousands of people are coming out to denounce racism in Montreal today. And this is just days after the Quebec Premier said that systemic racism does not exist in the province of Quebec. You know, against that backdrop, what do you want to say to people like Francois Legault and others who are watching the many people who've taken to the streets of Montreal today? Uh, I think a lot of time people in Quebec uh, want to put themselves on the higher, uh, uh, higher, like, level than people in the United States saying that there's no racism in Quebec because there's no not as much violence from the police there's not as much uh, like obvious discrimination but the one in Quebec is really more subtle it's in terms of like uh, the the dif difficulties that people in Quebec have into getting jobs it's uh, in terms of being having to conform to make people around you happy like in Quebec if you want to be black it's okay, they're not gonna judge you as long as you're not, like you don't bother, as long as you conform to the exact uh, idea of the society that they have. And if you are too loud, if you are expressing your culture, if you're expressing your difference, that's when they have a problem with you. And that's more obvious than maybe the, uh, that's less obvious, I mean, than the racism you could, you could see in the United States. Mm -hmm. And how does that manifest then in terms of opportunities as well? Because you grew up in Montreal. I'm wondering about the barriers uh, racialized people in Montreal, in Quebec face as they try to seek opportunities to, to fulfill their own lives. Uh, in terms of opportunities, I feel like it's, uh, uh, I'm a good example because I've seen people not having opportunities and I've had the uh, chance to have a lot of them opportunities because I understood from a young age that the system would only accept you if, let's say, uh, in Quebec we have a different like French accent. If you decide to have that accent instead of your like African or your Asian accent, people are going to be more inclined to hire you for jobs. So that's the sad part about it because I think you shouldn't have to be something else than yourself in terms of if you want to have a good job, if you want to prove that you're smart. And it's really sad that if you don't have maybe a Quebec accent, if you don't uh, watch hockey, if you're a little bit different, that's when people are going to have a problem with you. And that's more of the racism that we can see a lot in Quebec. You know, there are going to be people who are watching this right now who, who are hearing what you're saying, but then will go forward, forget what you said, turn a blind eye to acts of racism, both big and small. What do you say to that? Uh, what I would say, if, it's, if they find the current uh, movement to be bothering and if they think that 
uh, it's too much, that it's uh, too much on TV and it's not that much of a big deal, big deal. He should question themselves and wonder what it is for us, for black people to constantly be oppressed and what it is to really deal with that situation. And they're gonna understand that it's, a, it's a, something that's heavy on us and that's probably 10 times heavier than what they feel about the, the current movement that they're seeing in the streets. Mm -hmm. And as we said, thousands of people have shown up and so that must speak to just how deep the pain and the anger is being expressed today. Yeah, I'm really proud to see how many people showed up. I think whenever the, our community, whenever the people uh, like the human race just gather together and they show how much they love each other and how much they're strong together, that's always leading to more positive into our society rather than just uh, trying to divide and try to expose how people are, are different. I think whenever we stand united, that's when we make progress. Terry Gerba, thank you for this. All right, thank you so much. Have a nice day. You too.